Hello, this is Mr. Kenyanola, and I'm going to help you find the surface area of a hexagonal prism. So, uh, let's review really quick. Uh, a prism is a solid with two congruent bases that are parallel. Uh, so this is a hexagonal prism because it's two bases that you can sit on top of each other um, are parallel and they're congruent and they're hexagons. So that's why it's called a hexagonal or hexagonal or whatever you want to call it. So make sure you have hexa and gon and ul in the name. Uh, so it's a hexagonal prism. Um, so let's Think back, what's the formula for surface area of a prism? Uh, surface area is 2B. B represents base area, and since there's two bases, we're going to multiply by 2 to, for the area of both bases, plus the lateral area, which is all of these faces in between. Uh, and we, if we unwrapped all these faces to make one shape, it would be a rectangle. And to find the area of that rectangle would be uh, plus P, which is base perimeter, times H, which is the distance between the two bases. So let's start off with finding the area of the base of one of the bases of this hexagonal prism, and it's a hexagon. Um, so and it looks like it is a regular hexagon, so that makes it much easier for us. It's regular because all of the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. So it's equilateral and equiangular, so it's regular. Um, so let's figure this out. So if we divided this hexagon into triangles, we would have six triangles. And if you found the central angle, remember, so all the way around is 360. So we'll take our calculator, we'll put 360, divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 angles. So that would make each angle, each central angle, 60 degrees. So let's find the area of one of these triangles to start off with. So let's enlarge this triangle over here. Boom, it's enlarged and it's 60 degrees. And looks like each of these sides are nine. So this side would be nine. So I'm gonna put a nine right here. So let's find the area of this triangle. Uh, so the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. And remember the base and the heights are always perpendicular. They make 90 degree angles and this side and this side are not perpendicular, nor this side. So let's make a let's make two perpendicular uh, sides. Uh, so let's take let's draw a line going straight down that cuts this angle, this triangle in half, uh, so that we have a perpendicular angle, uh, perpendicular sides to have a right angle. Uh, so this line right here cuts this 60 degrees in half to make it a 30. And this triangle right here, since this is 90, this is 30. Uh, this will make this triangle, this angle 60 degrees. So what do we have here? A 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, so our goal is to find the area of this full triangle. But we're going to use this right here to help us find the height of this triangle. So the slide cuts this side in half. So since this entire side is nine, this side is 4.5, okay? And because this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, uh, this 4.5 is the opposite of this 30 degree angle. So 4.5 is a, the short side and we need to find the height right here. And since this height is the opposite of 60 degrees, uh, this side is the middle side. If you guys remember what the, the shortcut or the pattern is for 30, 60, 90 triangles, the short side, um, uh, well, the middle side, it's, this is the middle side because it's opposite the 60 degrees. The middle side is always just what the short side is times radical 3. So this right here would be 4.5 radical 3. Now we have everything we need to find the area of this triangle. 
All right, area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. The base and the height are perpendicular. So we're gonna take this entire side, which is nine, and multiply it by the height, which is 4.5 radical three divided by two. So let's just use our calculator. Uh, we're just gonna multiply this nine by 4.5 and we're going to learn we're going to leave everything in terms of the radical so we're not going to multiply the radical out so we get a crazy decimal we'll just leave that radical three there for the end so we'll just, we'll just work with these numbers right here so nine times 4.5 is 40.5 and we'll divide that by two which is 20.25 radical three so let's write 20.25 radical three. So this is the area of one triangle, but remember we're dealing with a hexagon which has six triangles. So we're gonna take this and multiply it by six. Okay, so we're gonna multiply this 20.25 times six, which is 121.5. Remember that radical three. So this represents the area of this entire hexagon. So now we are ordered the, the base of this hexagonal prism. So let's plug that into our formula for surface area. So we have two because of the two bases. And here's the area of the one base, the hexagon. So two times 121.5 radical three. Plus, uh, so P, you guys remember, P represents the base perimeter. And since every side for this base is 9, so and there's 6 sides, so let's just multiply it. 9 times 6, I shouldn't need a calculator for that, but I'm using it anyway. 9 times 6 is 54, so that's the base perimeter. Times how far the two bases are from each other, the distance between the two bases, and it looks like it's 12. So now we have everything. Uh, for, all we have to do now is multiply, multiply, and add those two together. Uh, so two times 121.5, oops, 21.5, is 243 radical three. Okay, we're just gonna leave that radical three, leave it in terms of the radical, plus 54 times 12, which is 648. And so you'd be tempted to combine these two, add these two, however, uh, this term right here has a radical. This one doesn't have a radical, so we can't combine them. So this is our final answer. So the surface area of this hexagonal prism is 243 plus 648 yards squared because of how many squares can fit. So there's your final answer. But if you want a decimal answer, you can do that too. Uh, so make sure that your calculator, go to mode, make sure that it's in classic. Okay, and I'm going to second and quit. So I'm gonna write 243 times second to get the square root of three. So now I have a decimal plus 648 which is 1,000, so or in decimal form, 1,068.8883346 yards squared. So there's the two representations for your answer. Uh, I, per I personally like leaving it in the terms of the radical. It looks... A little nicer than all these decimals but either way both are the correct answer there you go here's how you find the surface area of a hexagonal hexagonal hexo hexagonal prism there you go